Hello, everybody, and welcome to the important but unimportant news podcast. I'm your host, Beavers Rock, and this is my co-host, who is here this time, Kate. Hex. Hex. My lover, Sothis, a.k.a. Fantasy Anime. I see, I see. I didn't know you went by Hex. I thought that was just a Brunel thing, because picks. So we got uh, three news articles for you guys today. Uh going to read off the titles, and all of them are very interesting. The first one is the most interesting, being Fiona the Hippo's Vomit predicts Super Bowl win for Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I am not a sports ball person, but that title drew me in. Yeah, so I'm assuming this involves the uh, Super Bowl. I wasn't there to watch it. I was pretty much working the entire time, so if I'm wrong, you can uh, correct me there. <laughs> but judging on this video that we're seeing on, on the screen right now, this should be interesting. As they're saying, Fiona defied the odds and is the smallest hippo to survive. Are, are they feeding the hippo a fruitcake? I have no idea what that is. <laughs> that, I, don't, I don't know. Second article we got is Osaka Airport introduces canine comfort room complete with pole. Don't know what the pole is for, but uh, we'll find out later. It's this new business module. It's going to attract a lot of uh, unique clientele. Mm. <laughs> unique, you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then our last article is Mysterious Bermuda Triangle Ghost Ship Discovered 95 Years After It Vanished. As you all know, the Bermuda Triangle, it's the it's the triangle in the ocean that connects the islands together. Known for, like, its mysterious magnetic pulses, but in reality, it's a lot of the, uh... It's ghosts. Yeah. It's ghosts, yeah, uh, for sure. It's, uh, to sum it down, it's actually ocean farts is what's causing all of these magnetic fields to go haywire. Are you, are you saying the Bermuda Triangle is where the Earth's butthole is? Yeah, yeah, so you know the Empire State Building, right? Yeah, yeah. What, yeah, so, anyways. <laughs> anyways. Alright. <laughs> oh, God. Audio. Okay, so, apparently Fiona is a celebrity hippo. That is, that is something. Her vomit is, her, uh, correction, her vomit is a celebrity. I you am know, more confused. I've never seen a hippo vomit before. I've seen them poop. And I went to a, a zoo one time and experienced such a such a unique display. It's like, because they get their poop and they like get their tails and it's kind of like fanned everywhere. <laughs> You've seen that before, right? I haven't. Oh, I don't go to the zoo they, often. That's what they do. They get their poop and then it's kind of... They poop everywhere and it's it's a, it's unique. It's very, very unique. It's probably a good thing I haven't seen it before because yeah, yeah. I, would, I would probably vomit from seeing that. <laughs> Will it predict the next Super Bowl? <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, never mind. Yeah, it says Super Bowl win. I guess I'm. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm blind. Uh, apparently, the keepers set up some enrichment items, which I'm assuming is food to make it vomit. A fruit uh, cake. A fruit okay. cake. If that is safe or not, I mean, that's for the zookeepers to know. Uh, the two enrichment items were emblazoned with the Chiefs logo and the other with the 49ers. And apparently, Fiona went for the Chiefs. How? Yeah, wait, they, they vomit. wait, 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 wait. Vomits on Kansas City. It. What? Oh. Okay, so it's not exactly like anything I saw. That is not what I was thinking at all. I was, was gonna go like, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking like the hippo was gonna vomit, and then in the vomit it would have like the logo. <laughs> That's what the I was shit. thinking. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, That's, that, that would be amazing. Like, that is interesting. <laughs> No, that that would be a sight to behold. It would be. No, nah, this this article was obviously clickbait. It was. It it sure got me. <laughs> I was thinking it was like a work of art. Yeah, but uh, they set up like two miniature buoys in the pen, I guess, with the Chiefs and 49ers, and Fiona vomited next to the Chiefs, predicting the Chiefs winning. I guess. Uh, 
Fifty percent accuracy. Okay. Fifty percent ac. So this was just like a fluke. Then I guess they're making it seem like Fiona was like this freaking like clairvoyant hippo or something. She's you know her vomit had like sort of mystical freaking powder like powers that would Mm -hmm. you know predict the future you know you know when i get my next like erection or something it's like you know in her vomit (laughs) she tosses a coin she she puts a coin and then she vomits on the coin and that vomit is like you will get your next boner at freaking this time and place and it's like well thanks fiona that'll definitely bring some cum to my penis why couldn't we get an article about the top dog of psychic animals, Paul the Psychic Octopus, who, about ten years ago, successfully picked the outcome of eight World Cup games without getting a single prediction wrong. And, you know, next thing you know, give her a spoon and she can start bending. <laughs> I bet Paul could do that with his tentacles. Doesn't even need his mind. You know, the- Talked of among physic an- oh, physic psychic animals, it means Paul the psychic octopus. Yeah, octopi. Oct- is it it's still hot? And then there's a photo gallery of baby hippos at the bottom. So that's what it was. Just a ploy to look at their baby hippos. I guess. Ugh. Anyways, uh, next one. Osaka Airport introduces canine comfort room. Uh sounds very comfortable. It, with the with the pole inside. Four dogs. Four dogs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, if it's for humans or not, is yet to be decided. That's what the poll's for, obviously. Mm-hmm. But you know. Mm-hmm. Let's see. The airport is setting up a toilet area for traveling dogs, complete with a polo for them to cock. That's oh, what the poll is for. They're there to pee on. I get I it. I get it now. Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking the dogs were going to like. <laughs> I wasn't either. I forgot they did that. Because I have two female dogs <laughs> and not a male dog. The, the toilet. People. <laughs> the pee pee pole. <laughs> the the pee pole. It is, it is named and quote the pee pole. Wait, we'll fl- Hold on. We'll fl- hold hold on. Flush? I'm assuming it'll like <laughs> spray water down the pole or something. I, I guess. Let's see. The toilet and a fenced off yard outside the terminal will also have a shower and water bowls for the dogs. Uh, they've got a they've got a uh, water bowl in the picture with a dog. Uh, how the dogs are going to get the water? That that, that looks empty to me. I think. <laughs> Is that a little bit of water at the bottom right there? Yeah, yeah. But like they've got a uh, uh, spinner thing for the water. Oh, so how the, the dogs supposed to get that? Oh, it's to wash their hands after they're done taking the piss. <laughs> Obviously. I don't know. See, this is like this is like it's sort of in- it's like innovative. Like I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I want to say this is like a norm for like most airports. Is it though? But like half the time, most of their animals would be trained already, and I get like it's the idea to get them like if it's like international flights, you know, their mm-hmm. flights can take more than like in the six hours. So yeah, that yeah. makes sense. But it's still the same equivalent of, like, you know, why didn't you go to the bathroom during lunch? It's like, I don't have to go then, you know? <laughs> when they were leading themselves beforehand, then, yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I didn't really own any dogs, so I don't really know, like, the convenience and or the inconvenience of, like, bringing a pet along just then take a hot steamer, like, on the side, <laughs> like, in the middle of the airport, so. Yeah, I mean, at least we won't have to have that happening at the Osaka yeah. airport. That is very true. And... Think, think about the additional cost for having a separate janitor for this area. Because you can't expect the janitors that already mess with the bathrooms in the airport to just come all the way out for this dog toilet area. More jobs, right? More jobs is good. <laughs> uh, it's designed to encourage dogs to relieve themselves before boarding domestic flights. Domestic flights? This isn't even international. <laughs> What? Okay. <laughs> Service dogs are permitted to use disabled, accessible toilets in the terminal, but the mess must be cleaned up. I just have to clean up the mess anyways, okay. Okay, okay. I didn't know service dogs were allowed to use disabled, accessible toilets. I didn't even know there was disabled, accessible toilets to begin with. I'm assuming, like... It, it's the... It's usually, the like, the big stall. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Now, I've always been, like, repulsed to, like, public bathrooms. 
Unless they're really yeah, been in a if it's an emergency, then I'll go. Mm-hmm. But generally, I'm safe in the comfort of my own bathroom toilet. Yeah, normally I am too, but sometimes you just gotta go. <laughs> in that case, I'll just go in my pants, dude. Honestly, <laughs> like you just, isn't that when people bring multiple pants along to the trips? You know, they need to go to right then and there. Fine. No, that is not <laughs> what they do <laughs> with the multiple pants they take along. <laughs> Okay, do we need to have a discussion? <laughs> Are you making a mess in your pants? No. Just so you don't have no. to go to the public bathroom. Maybe. I remember one time when I was really younger. I was, this is like an elementary school. I think this is second grade. I, I, I really had to go to the bathroom. Uh huh. But I was so like scared to tell the teacher, like, hey, I need to go to the bathroom. So I'm thinking, like, you know, if I just go a little bit, and it's like... Just, <laughs> Just like a little bit, it won't be so bad. And then oh, I, and then well. I kind of let it go. And then it started just leaking a lot. And I was like, "Oh shoot, I can't stop it." So I had to run up to my teach, my teacher, and go like, "Hey, can I go?" And she like said, "Yeah." So honestly, I'm so crazy to think that I thought maybe just a little bit of leakage <laughs> would be fine. But then it, it was like, you know, once I open up that 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 nozzle, it was just it was a faucet, uh, dog. Uh, I ended up uh. cleaning myself off and. Went to the bathroom, but that's that's always a memory that's gonna stick with me to this day. What what did you do with the wet pants? Did Suffer bust- through the rest of the day. <laughs> I think because I think that bathroom had like it was the air dry. There was no paper towels, so uh-huh. I ended up just like I think my strat was just to wet the entire pants. But I still had like the moist like underwear underneath, so I don't really remember. But all I remember is like the leak had just going down my right leg, and I was like, this isn't gonna work at all. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fun. That that is that that right there is an experience. <laughs> Second grade. Friggin' I was about to say seventeen years ago, but that's not right. It's more like fifteen years ago. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Last article: the uh, ghost ship. I it was ghosts. I swear. A ghost ship discovered 95 years after it vanished. The long-lost wreck of the SS Cotopaxi uh, disappeared in 1925, was discovered once again recently, approximately 15 days ago. You know, the mis- the mysteriousness is slowly fading away from the Bermuda Triangle. See, look, ocean farts. That's, the vent. <laughs> That's what the steam is. <laughs> it's actually the, uh, like, you know how in the cartoons they got the smell smoke? Oh, that, yeah. That's what that is. It's the ocean stinky. <laughs> okay, so it was incredibly exciting. Quotes a diver, author, and researcher who helped find the wreck. Uh, he's done multiple ship shipwreck dives, but this one truly stood out, I guess, because he finally found a ship. Uh, a new... Shipwreck Secrets. Burnett is the lead explorer. Barnett. Shipwreck Secrets, a new science channel series that will feature the discovery of the Cotopaxi in its premiere episode. I might want to watch that. That sounds interesting, actually. Too bad I don't have cable. (laughs) (laughs) Too bad I don't have cable either. (laughs) Uh, The SS Cotopaxi set off from Charleston, South Carolina and was bound for Cuba in 1925 and then vanished. No trace of the ship or its crew of 32 were ever identified, which made the vessel ripe for both folklore and pop culture. <sighs> uh, sorry, am I just saying... What? Oh. What is this? So, they're just making a comparison. Steven Spielberg's a classic, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which is, you know, is a popular one about the aliens. And the ship appears in the middle of the Gobi Desert in the movie. I'm gonna show a clip. We're not gonna watch. Actually, we are gonna watch it. Yeah, it's just yeah. It's just a scene. It's with... short. If it loads, because there's a helicopter and a ship. There it is. There's the. It's, uh, it has a name on it. It's his... This doesn't look like it would be made in 1945. It also looks historically inaccurate too. But you know, I don't know the technology they had. Because we obviously know it. not the technology. Not in the that is also it's true. Why so so we, now, we now know for a fact that Close Encounters of the Third Kind is uh, fake. Yeah, it's you fake. Know, I originally thought it was real at one point in my life. 
How that's actually a lie. How the heck is a ship supposed to get in the middle of a desert anyway? What <laughs> is Lugia, Shadow Lugia gonna come <laughs> over <laughs> with it and take it to the desert? No, man. Haven't you seen it? aliens, Doug? Ah, uh, yes, no. aliens. Those, cause those are real. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Say something yeah. stupid. <sighs> Freaking what's next? Ghosts are fake? Unbelievable. Uh, in recent years, social media memes have suggested that... Hey, Sean, I think... Uh, what? I think I got something to tell you. What, actually. what like, is it? About the ghosts thing. <laughs> what about the ghosts? We'll see that later. Right? Another time. Okay, time. Okay, another time, another time, another time. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, social media memes have suggested it's that Total Taxi memes. had suddenly appeared empty and intact as a ghost ship. See, ghosts are real. Floating off the coast of Cuba, which makes sense because, you know, it was headed for Cuba, so maybe it was just finishing his, its voyage for the ghosts that were on board. But people can't see the ghosts. They could only see the ghost ship because it was large, and, like, the energies emanating off of it were allowing people to notice it. Right? That's some some pretty fat vibes right there, Doug. <laughs> but because the people ghosts don't have large energy, ghost energy, we can't notice them. It's this so this ghost ship is just giving us one fat vibe check. It's like it's it, it, it is. <laughs> the ship wasn't quite missing. No, because clearly they found it shipwrecked or like at the bottom of the ocean. Well, let's see. Oh, Barnett and his team come through historical documents. Uh, apparently, there was a previously unknown distress signal call sent by the Cotopaxi on December first. Yo, this is getting. This is actually interesting to me, dude. Because I've always, every time I was like younger, I've always been interested in this stuff, especially the Bermuda Triangle. Because there's always like a scientific explanation besides this, but like this one was just super weird. Yeah, I'm telling you, ocean farts, dog. <laughs> this is the only magnetic fields. But it's also another interesting thing that I hope to find with this, with the appearance of the Cotopaxi. I wonder if they'll find Amelia Earhart ship or her, her plane. That would be nice. Cause they, cause the, cause we all know she was the. She was she vanished to mm -hmm. people thought they found her remains like on an island somewhere mm -hmm. like she was eaten by people thought she was eaten by cannibals she was killed sort of thing but they have no sign of her plane now so. do you think she might have crashed on the island salvaged her ships for parts and scattered it throughout the island so they just can't find any of the parts just cause. Or do you think she crash landed near the island and swam to the island? I think that's the. I think the latter is probably the most. This is the one that I'm following because the thing with the. Um, I think it's flight nineteen, that's also associated with the Bermuda Triangle. That when they start crossing that area, then that's that's when like the the electromagnetic waves start messing around with their their compasses mm -hmm. and also like the the planes themselves and that's what caused them to crash so there's also because there is like a, people are speculating like, relationships between like flight 19 and also yeah. Amelia Earhart ship and also the Cotopaxi <laughs> but since we discovered the Cotopaxi just now well not just now but obviously we soon mm -hmm. we're gonna find flight 19 and Earhart ship hopefully that'd be interesting and that is so because people already like figured out the case with their Bermuda Triangle and what's actually up with it ghosts <laughs> yeah yeah ghost farts yeah. <laughs> so that's that's what's up maybe that's what's up. maybe they'll find amelia's shipwreck ship secrets shipwreck secrets because i mean an airship is still technically a ship just saying I just say it's it. not a plane it's an airship it's an i airship. swear oh my goodness oh uh, yeah that's uh so that's interesting from, to know, actually from the distress call, uh, they mapped the ship routes, the coordinates of the signal, and other hints from the documents. They honed in on a site discovered 35 years ago known as the Bear Wreck. Ship at the site had never been identified, but the guy said the evidence and paperwork combined with what was found during dives led to the conclusion that it was, in fact, the SS Cotopaxi. 
I'm wondering if they ever found the name of it on the ship, because that would be very defining. <laughs> it's like they see a big boat. Yep. That's it. So, yep. I see the name. That's the code of that's, that's it. There were several elements that confirmed the identity, such as the dimensions of the ship, its length, and the measurement of the boiler. Uh, so they didn't, like... They could just like, scrape it off. There's the lug and so they went inside, looked at everything. They went the hard way. Um, That's not very efficient, I don't think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they had to go inside there to inspect it. Yeah, to, like, get the that, rust. That was... <laughs> just gonna snack on the rest. Just go, like, oh. <laughs> Acting like Joey over here. <laughs> what is this Saint Augustine? It's is the that place another ship? where they uh uh uh-huh. so they like where Well Saint Augustine is they're... not located the, the port, I think. Mm. Is not located within the so called Bermuda Triangle. The ship's mysterious disappearance in the general vicinity led some to connect the ship to the legendary region. I'm assuming this means the Bermuda Triangle, but who knows if that actually means Garatina's rip in space time. Space time. With all the uh, weird gravity stuff. Because who knows? Maybe they went into Garatina's space time dimension Bruh. and got flipped Bruh. and fell down to the Bruh. ocean floor. Wait, but is every Smash player knows it's Palkia that flips the stage? Garatina has powers of both, I swear. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it, it, have you seen the space time dimension? I'm sure you have, because the... apparently fucking Gen 4 is your favorite goddamn gen. Distortion world? Yeah, dude, Frost Ass. Bermuda Triangle is a loosely defined portion of the Atlantic stretching roughly from Miami to Bermuda to Puerto Rico. Why is it three location? Ah, tri- <laughs> Why is it three locations? That's Sean. How? What does tri stand for? <laughs> it's the triangle. <laughs> you know, it's three angles. Three, one, two, three. It makes it makes a triangle. It's a three. End my life. It's three points. <laughs> and some believe ships and planes are. Air- Ships and airships are more likely <laughs> to Spanish there. It doesn't say planes. This is how do I? Oh, no, he's gonna do inspect element. I, th- I think I'd press the Here, wrong button. I got this. I got this. I got this. Right, you got this. You got this. You're gonna change it to airship. I'm the. Did he just close out a no, bum? No, 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 no. We're, we're... That's uh, not what we wanted. There it is. Check the set. Inspect. Where does that say that? Heck, I know. Let's see. What's that? Oh, 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 oh. Planes. Planes. Uh, there's not. Planes. That is not how you spell planes. Oh, plebs. <laughs> yes. yes. Airships. Bang! Oh, oops. <laughs> no space. <laughs> we are technical genius. Dude, we're hackers. <laughs> Airships. Bam. Bam. The article fits our view. <laughs> it's perfect. Exactly how media works. Fuck. Ships and airships. <laughs> Barnett personally believe it's all folklore. folklore. Uh, really, it's all just ghosts. Folklore. Uh, the U.S. Coast Guard does not recognize the area or its nickname, and NOAA's National Air So Earth that's a lie. They obviously know. Who has it known at the Bermuda? You can't just go to the Coast Guard and not know where Bermuda Triangle is. I know, right? It's like dog. The NOAA's National Ocean Service said environmental considerations could explain many, if not most, of the disappearances. Uh, the agency stated the ocean has always been a mysterious place to humans, and when foul weather or poor navigation is involved, it can be a very deadly place. This is true, especially when ghosts want you to drown to join them. I'm just saying. <laughs> this is oh true God. all over the world. 
the, there's the, ghosts all over the world. Ugh. The facts are matching up, Cade. Bruh. There's no evidence that mysterious disappearances occur with any greater frequency in the Bermuda Triangle than in any other large well-traveled area of the ocean. See, this is all just bull honk here. They're trying to say that... <laughs> they are trying to distract us from the ghost menace in the Bermuda... There's fucking ghost pirate ships out there. Dude, haven't you heard the tale of the blue... Oh my gosh, actually, hold on. There's, um... <laughs> So, there's these creepy stories by Alvin Schwartz. You know, mm-hmm. the, those ones, the scary stories. I think I've dark. heard some of them. There's this one called The Pale Blue Light. It's about a pirate ship that went down. And they end up seeing it. It's such an eerie tale. Like, it's written so, like, just so eerily. It's it's a really, really good book. Or, not like, it's a really good story. Mm-hmm. I like it a lot. Fits with your ghosts. It dog. does. The Pale. It's, it's got ghosts in it. It does. The entire ship is a ghost. Heck yeah, dude. Uh-oh. Wait, we missed it. What? It's February 9th. That's when it premieres. No! We missed it. We missed the Shipwreck Secrets debut. Man, now, now we can't confirm that it's real. <laughs> now it's just fake. <laughs> so, uh, if any of you actually watched Shipwreck Secrets on February 9th when it debuted, uh, tell us what they told us about ghosts. Uh, we need to know. And if they disprove it, they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You're right. factual evidence, fake news. Fake. <laughs> factual evidence, fake. Fake, yeah, misinformed. Factual evidence, more like fake evidence. Factual evidence, dude. <sighs> yeah. uh-huh. That's a good one. No, okay, before we end this podcast for today, mm-hmm. uh, thoughts on the Sonic movie? Sonic movie, alright, so. I thought it was a great movie. I liked it a lot. It was because you have like. So, see like there's been a trend of like good video game movies coming out lately like you had like Assassin's Creed that was pretty garbanzo beans was it it was it was like I thought it was okay it was an like okay, compared to like other movies like the Super Mario Brothers and the Doom movie it's definitely better wait there was a Doom movie there was a Doom movie I haven't seen it had the rock in it like the Dwayne the, the Dwayne the rock the Johnson <laughs> the guy Dwayne the rock the Johnson <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy and then you had the, the Assassin's Creed movie which was pretty cool and then you had the biggest one next one was like Detective Pikachu mm-hmm. and that one struck everyone's heart core it was like oh this is like the Pokemon the first movie 2000 when in reality it was technically a sequel yeah to the Pokemon the first movie 2000 because the movie opens up how the first movie like did play it off sort of did they make Mewtwo or capture Mewtwo they made Mewtwo that's his whole thing they so, use they use the DNA of Mew to make Mewtwo. Okay, but then, how is it a sequel to the first movie? So what happens is that. Oh, okay. Is so like alternate or, originally timelines? they made Mewtwo, and then they broke. F- he broke free. And now I haven't seen the Pokemon the first movie two thousand in quite a long time, but mm-hmm. the beginning events is pretty much what happens, and like the the first opening scenes of Detective Pikachu is like what happens in the first movie. So, and then it's like, I think that I want to say they capture him again. Mm-hmm. And then in the midst of him breaking free, this is when like Pokemon the first movie happens. Yeah. I'm going to have to rewatch the first movie again to know when that actually takes place. But I know they're, they are connected in a way. Like, I want to say it's like a spiritual successor, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like this fan service, but it, it could also just be a possibility. It, it could be a, a throwback. A throwback, yeah. And now tying that in, you know, think about it. So you got Rhyme City, part of where Pokemon exists, and then another part of the Earth. You got, we got, you got Sonic. Or, 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 or. It's, or. I'm telling you, dude, this, uh, this whole Sonic movie is leading up to the Super Smash Bros. cinematic universe, right? Yeah. And the connector they introduced is the rings. Mm-hmm. And think about it. So you got like Travel Pokemon, dimensions. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sonic's like you open at the end, uh, entering spoiler territory. So if you haven't seen the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, be sure to like skip ahead to like a time marker where we stop talking about it, or just stop watching here. Yeah, and go watch the movie because we're just gonna be talking about the Sonic movie for the rest of the podcast. Yeah. So getting into it, I was saying at the end he has like the the rings throws them up and that's when they go to the next place yeah, yeah. and that location that they've been talking about is this big mushroom 
area. Yep. You know, think about it. So you got the Mushroom Kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. Eggman was thrown there. And then you have the Super Mario Brothers movie. And then that's going to play out. Because they're making the animated Mario Brothers movie. Are they? That's confirmed, yeah. Did you know that? I did not know that. They are. They are making a Super Mario Brothers animated movie. And then in the post credit scene, or somewhere at the end, Mario and the, them fools are going to discover Eggman, or Robotnik, and they go like, who's this guy? And then the scene go like, oh no. And then Sonic, and then Sonic and his friend are going to go on a trip, and they end up going to like... A part of the Earth that has Pokemon on it, uh huh, or something. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Like, or do you think so? The rings are used to traverse worlds mm-hmm. and planets, and also like just different parts of the same planet too. Yeah. So, do you think the ring could also be used to enter a separate timeline? Maybe. Because if. If Pokemon doesn't exist in Sonic Earth, what if it exists in a different Earth from a different timeline? That's possibility. That Sonic can be like Pokemon. And then that throw the ring. Or maybe like Detective Pikachu's like some the Pokemon. It's like it shows the origin. Sonic is messing around the rings a bunch and they end up a bunch of humans and traveling to this planet where Pokemon existed and then they just grew out. Mm-hmm. And eventually they came into one sort of thing. Yeah. That's a possibility. I don't know. He, he threw it. He, he gets a tiny ring. He throws it in front of the Earth's rotational direction into the Pokemon. <laughs> <Earth>. <laughs> My gosh. I don't know. We'll find a way to connect these universes together. Probably. It's going to be a whole multiverse thing. And then you get a, and then they're gonna go like all the way back to the past when Earth was just created, and they had the Legend of Zelda movie. Uh huh. They're gonna go for from the far distant future, and then have the Metroid and Star Fox at the same time. And then later on, they're gonna have like on a different part of the world, you have Legend of Zelda, and then also the Fire Emblem series happening. And then like the Mario like discovers like oh there are planets out there so he just takes to space and you get the super mario galaxy movies and the way that the mario stuff goes into space to explore planets is with the rabbits <laughs> from the XCOM type game <laughs> the, the mario plus rabbit kingdom thing and then they're gonna have like and then next thing you know, they're going to start putting more third-party characters. And then, you know, and then Robotnik comes back and starts creating Metal Gears. And then we're going to have the Metal Gear Solid movie. And then freaking these these people in this city are going to start beating each other up. And then they're going to learn about, like, the magic of fire on them. And then we're going to get Street Fighter. And then we're going to freaking get, like... And then next thing you know, these people that, like, learn this magic end up learning the power within themselves. And a bunch of evil comes in. We get the Persona movie. And... <laughs> And it's going to keep going on, and then, like, in a different world. It's going to go insane. This person, they they got these people, and the swords are going to mix their swords, and I'm going to get the freaking Final Fantasy movie. Oh, it just goes on, man. Yeah. just goes on. Let's see what other franchise that I miss is. Metroid? Oh, I said Metroid. I did. Okay. And then the distant future. While Metroid is happening, while Metroid and Star Fox are happening out in space, along with Super Mario Galaxy, I guess, on Mm -hmm. Earth. You got F Zero, but that franchise doesn't exist anymore. That's an F and F Zero. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, poor Falcon. Poor Captain Falcon. Yeah. I'm telling you, Doug. And then all of those movies are gonna combine into the subspace emissary. And then they're gonna fight Taboo, and Taboo's gonna die. And it's gonna be like, oh sweet, and Sonic's gonna be the Sonic. one to kill Sonic's Taboo. Gonna, yeah, exactly. He's gonna be kill Taboo. And the next thing you know. They're going to have the, and then, you know, the, the discovery of the different planets, it's going to be the different feature. Earth freezes over, Earth's crazy, you know, all these people moving to other planets. Ice Age 6. And then we're going to, Ice Age 6 on the Earth, while that's happening, you got the Kirby movie coming out, and then and then next thing you know, then they got World of Light, and yeah, that's, that's, so, that's my theory. I haven't actually finished Subspace Emissary or seen the ending cutscene. Mm-hmm. Does Sonic actually kill Taboo? Sonic's the one that, like, defeats Taboo, like, exploits the weakness. He breaks his wings, and everyone's like, oh, okay, we can fight back. And mm-hmm. Sonic's like... 
<laughs> and then this in the final boss. Yeah. He like shatters the wing and it's like, oh, Sonic's in this guy. That's right. Gotcha. It's pretty cool. I'm glad they didn't have Meta Knight do it. Because then people would have been even more angry at Meta Knight and Brawl. He's like, well, he's top tier. He's top tier in the story. <laughs> the cutscenes. Yeah, that's my theory for the cinematic universe for the Super Smash Brothers. It's going to compete with Marvel. DC. Thoughts on the uh, ending thing with Tails after the credits? So I'm How f- angry were you that it wasn't Shadow? I was very angry that it wasn't so, Shadow. So, I I knew they were going to have to implement another character from a Sonic movie, or from the Sonic franchise, because I don't know who the heck the owl person was. I, I saw the echidnas attacking them, and I was like, yeah. oh, okay, they're going to have Knuckles at one point. And then I was like, I wonder if they're going to bring in, like, you know, Tails, Knuckles, literally anyone else, like Amy, I don't know, Cream, freaking God, Big the I Cat. I hope Amy doesn't come in. Yeah. She's going to simp for Sonic. <laughs> She will. <laughs> oh, then, it'll be so yeah. bad. And then I saw Tails come in, and I was like, okay, yeah. But I was like, I, was, I saw it coming, but I was kind of happy to see them. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna find this guy, and you know, if, uh, that tail means tornado though, that super cool plane. So they're obviously they're setting up for a sequel, unless that's just a little bit of fan service. But I'm pretty sure that's a sequel. That should be. I a mean, we saw Doctor Robotnik get go on full Robotnik with that yep. mustache. Mm-hmm. He's in the Mushroom Kingdom, obviously. He shaved like yeah, Doctor Eggman does. Yeah, he turned practically turned into Doctor Eggman he's, at that point. He's gonna fill himself up with funguses. Yes, yeah, so, so he, he gets fat. He gets that body type. <laughs> And then he's going to challenge Mario to, like, a weight contest or something. I don't know. But, yeah, that's the Mushroom King. I'm telling you, dog. No, no, no. He's going to try and eat the power mushroom that Mario does instead of growing his... <laughs> his belly. And it's permanent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's that's my thoughts. I went on a little ramp there, but I think that's okay. Personally, I think the Sonic movie is now my favorite movie for life because the favorite movie of my life used to be surfs up <laughs> when when that came out i i have watched surfs up at least 50 times in my life i don't know where the disc is i i wanted to watch it oh, I again sl- I recently. Sl- my disc oh, do you? yeah we could watch it or... heck yeah we could watch that later Dude, I still, dude, I, to this day, I, like, I still don't quite remember the plot of, like, Surf's Up. <laughs> but apparently there's a surf contest, and yep, Jake is. was his main character, the rocket penguin. And a chicken, he just, some stoner chicken, he just kind of gets knocked out. Pe- some peas on a foot, I think. Mm-hmm, that happened. And then carves his own boar, and he becomes a master with, overnight. With the grain. <laughs> yeah, and then he with meets this the old grain. surfer dude who's actually just a washed up bum, and then he's really good. Mm-hmm. And then he wins the contest, gets the girl, and then... He does get the girl. Yeah, and then I know the intro scene is a bunch of siblings fighting or something. But it's like, a, yeah, it's uh, it's a good movie actually. It, it is, it is my second best movie. Yeah, because after this one, you got the song. What about the Paw Patrol? <laughs> We're not talking about Paw Patrol. <laughs> Paw Patrol is a joke, <laughs> and it is going to stay that way forever. All right. All right. <laughs> Sonic movie. I still don't understand why Paw Patrol has a game on Steam. I still don't understand why you bought it for us several times. <laughs> it was a really good. It was on sale, it's dog. Thirty dollars. <laughs> it's like half of a triple A title right there. <laughs> it was on sale. Oh my God, for what? Like thirty percent off? Fifty? Mm-hmm. I think it was a Christmas sale. Oh my God. <sighs> and then uh. My a couple of my favorite parts from the movie were the bar fight thing. Oh, yeah, that was a really interesting sequence. I like that one too. Really well. Done. I uh, when Doctor Eggman started using the power of the quill for his ship, and then Sonic was going around like all the drones and missiles and whatnot. Cool. But then the the ship started to actually move with Sonic, and I'm like, mm-hmm. Sonic, notice it. It's gone. <laughs> So it's going your speed. Mm-hmm. And then the ending when uh, Tim and his wife uh, show Sonic his cave being the attic. Mm-hmm. And while like, he has a race car badge. He has a race Heck car badge. Heck yeah. 
Okay, good. I'm glad you didn't say any of the scenes where he floss. <laughs> well, I mean, he he did floss at the ending. He flossed twice in the whole movie. That's two times too many. <laughs> I think one of my favorite scenes is when um yeah, especially the bar fight scene when you spam neutral B on Robotnik shit. Mm-hmm. And that scene where he folds up the paper and it's Sanic. I love that scene. That was so a much. good one. That was a good meme. Sanic. Sanic. Crazy Earl showing showing a picture of Sanic. I also love the freaking renditions of the Green Hill Zones, too. Oh, yeah. This, like. Mm-hmm. It was such a good freaking. <laughs> such a good. It really brought a little bit of semen to my willy hearing that one. It really did. <laughs> That well, was a good movie. I'm glad they're finally making good video game movies. You know, right? I saw a post earlier that was like, uh, with the children that were like fans of the games and whatnot growing older and being able to like direct and write and whatnot. Uh huh. The video, the video game movies are just gonna get better uh, because yes. they've got passion behind them. Oh, that's true. Rather than just money, money, money. Mm-hmm. So now I'm thinking of how the Nintendo movie is going to work out. Or the Mario. Same thing. If it's fully animated... It's going to be an animated, fully animated movie. Then it, it should be good. Yeah. As long as it's not shitty CGI. It's like the same animation as Jetty Pikachu and Sonic. No, I don't think they're going to make Mario for you. My issue is, though... Are they going to make... Because... I don't think they're going to make a Zelda movie. I wish they make a Zelda but movie. But if they do, how would it be? Would it be like realistic animation? I think or would it be live action? Because I don't think it'll be live action. I think they should make it live action. I feel like... That, if, that if, may be a bit controversial. Yeah. But I think Legend of Zelda should be live action. I feel like it could be like both. Like a realistic animation. Like think, I was trying to think like... Really, like... Like, How to Train Your Dragon, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, that kind of animation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I'm thinking, for like, if they were to make, like, a Fire Emblem movie, that'd be live action, obviously. Yeah. And if they were going to make, like, Star Fox, that could be animated. Metroid could be li- uh, live action. Mm-hmm. So they could do that. Of course, with the CG elements in there. Of course, I'm getting over my head now. We're making a whole cinematic. <laughs> no. Back on the cinematic The universe. question for Legend of Zelda, what game are they going to make a movie off of? Well, because de- depending on the game, that really choose like decides if they're gonna animate it or live action. Well, obviously they're gonna do probably there, there's three options. They're either gonna do their own take with Link fighting Gan, like what they did with Sonic. Yeah, you know their own little take on that. The prop they might do a rendition of Ocarina of Time or Twilight Princess, since those are like the two most populars, mm-hmm. or just a Breath of the Wild movie. Since the most recent, and also it's the link with yeah. the Smash. But I'm thinking they're probably going to do their own take with Legend of Zelda to fit in with the Super Smash Bros. cinematic universe. Because uh, the one that I would want them to make is Twilight Princess, mm-hmm. because that's pretty much like the one of the only Zelda games I've played. <laughs> and Midna. I want to see Midna. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. No. In the tiny form. But actually, okay. the adult oh, form. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword. Because... The origin story. Uh, because that is the other Zelda game that I have played. Yeah, and that makes sense, too. It is the origin story, too, of, like, the, the basis of Zelda. For, like, the entire Link Legend of Zelda series? For the entire Zelda series. The first in the timeline, yeah. Hmm. Gotcha. But, but then, yeah. Because so. I, uh, I really like how Skyward Sword works... Because, like, we would get to see him fly through the skies. I think Skyward Sword Link has had the most emotion out of all the Links, too. Mm-hmm. That was pretty good. And him and Zelda's relationship was kind of cute, too. But, yeah. Now, I'm thinking if they were to make a Zelda movie, it'd probably be, like, their own take. Kinda it like probably the, would be. Kind of like they do with Sonic. And with Detective Pikachu, of course, it was based off the game, but they also had their own take on it, too, to fit in with the story of Pokemon, the first movie. Yeah. I completely forgot about Detective Pikachu, the game. <laughs> I completely yeah. forgot that that existed. Me too. I forgot the. I thought I forgot it was a game. I was like, when when the movie came out, I was like, did the game ever finish and come out? <laughs> yeah, no, it's been a game. For when a while. did it come out? I I want to say it came out like two years. It's it's. I think it's a 2017, 2016 oh my game. God. Yeah. 
That's so long ago. Yeah. They, I feel like there was a lot of publicity for that, and, and then, then it then just snapped yeah, away. The game launched, and then it had its thing, and it was just gone. I think people were more hyped about like Pikachu being voice acted by that by Ryan Reynolds, and they're mm-hmm. like, "Oh, sweet!" And the game launched. It's like, oh, okay, it's, it's just a game. Yeah. Yeah. People but. are more a fan of movies than games for whatever reason. <laughs> Can't get hours of fun off of a movie. Yeah, that's true. Right. The movie yeah, is I love 60 hours minutes. long. Sixty hours. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's, that's there. Fair. There's a movie that has gameplay on the PS4 by Hideo Kojima. <laughs> Good old Death Stranding. Oh my god, didn't that game like kind of flop? I don't think so. I heard it got like a lot of backlash just for like the lack of gameplay. Like the game makes you think you're doing something by like the experience, but in reality, you're just just you're just being a delivery boy, and that's all it was. Well, I mean. Yeah, that is all it is, but it, I suppose it just clicks for some people, and some people it doesn't. People like the delivery. That is, that is all games, but more so for types of games like that. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm a fan of Death Stranding. I like the story. The gameplay was pretty good. Uh, Antimatter Bomb is fucking shitty, though. Ever since I got to that mission, I have not played Death Stranding. (laughs) Eventually, I might get back to it. Yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of hype surrounding Death Stranding. I'm pretty sure, though, I'm fairly certain the reason was because it was like Kojima's like yeah. solo project after mm-hmm. leaving Konami. <coughs> Excuse me. That's probably the reason why it had so much hype. Yeah, so I guess at this point we're just kind of looking for like his own titles. What else he can do? Because that was like his first little dip in there, and he's yeah. probably gonna use that as like a testing to see like, hey, what do they want? What do they like? And if Kojima's smart, he'll capitalize off that. But we all know make Death Stranding too. Death Stranding. <laughs> <laughs> but we, he can't continue the Metal Gear series because they're unfortunately owned by Konami. Oh man! So we, there's no more Metal Gear. So Metal Gear Solid Five has kind of ended off the way it did. How did it end? Was it good? It was just. It was just at a very very abrupt ending. The reason being is because Kojima had a lot more stuff he wanted to add, a lot more stuff he wanted to fine tune. Mm-hmm. But Konami was like, "Okay, this needs to be released now. We can't wait for that." So he's like, "Oh, want to work on it." He's like, "Nope, you gotta release it." So he released it, and the rest was released as like bonus content mm-hmm. or something like that. But it kind of sucked. But that's just how it was. Did Konami fire Kojima, or did Kojima quit? Uh, or is it like an like a kind of honorary discharge kind of? Yeah, no, no, Konami. So what happened is that I think Kojima quit. I'm not. I'm actually kind of hazy on the details of if Konami quit or left. But what happened was that uh, Ko- Konami said Kojima was not allowed to go pick up his award for Metal Gear Solid Five at the Game Awards. Yep, I remember that. Yeah, and they ended up removing his names. On like a lot of the games of his, because you know, it says like on Metal Gear has like has this like a Hideo Kojima game. Mm-hmm. They removed all of that, like his promotional games. So he's kind of like what the frick. So I'm pretty sure he left after that, and he said like the the people at Konami just treat him like crap. You know, they treat their employees like crap. So Konami's just a cesspool at this point. So I'm pretty sure he left after that, but I wouldn't be surprised if they fired him. Yeah, I see. I see. Yep. 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 Alright, it's 4am, Cade. Oh, God. (laughs) I think I've kept you up for long enough. (laughs) God. (laughs) (laughs) So, we can go ahead... Well, you can go ahead and go to sleep. Oh, no, dog. I'm gonna go shower. (laughs) Because my hair feels disgusting. Okay. But that is going to be the end of the podcast for today. Expect another one on Monday, as I've said before. I I know this is coming out on Saturday, (laughs) and I said it would be Mondays and Fridays, but, uh... It wasn't even Friday the time of recording. It was... um, Well, it was... (laughs) (laughs) It's fine, it's fine. It's Friday because I haven't gone to bed yet. (laughs) It's been been recorded Friday, it's fine. (laughs) But yeah... (laughs) Everyone, thanks for listening. I hope you like the news and the additional 20, 20 minutes of Sonic and whatever we're just talking about. Smash Cinematic Universe talk. 
and I hope to see you all in the next episode. Peace out. Yo.